members and those in the gallery and watching, the senators uh, voted on the rules 25 to 3, and part of those rules uh, say that all other pretrial motions shall be ruled on by uh, the presiding officer, which is myself. I'll begin with motion 2, submitted by the House Board of Managers. Uh, this motion is entitled, Motion to Clarify Certain Senate Rules Governing the Impeachment Trial of Warren Kenneth Paxton, Jr. This motion was partially addressed by my August 9th exhibit production order. Additionally, the manager's request for clarification on timing has been addressed through an agreement of the parties last week. For those watching, I'll clarify the timekeeping for the trial moving forward. There has been much discussion on the impeachment rule, especially number 17 on time limitations. Each side of the House managers and the Attorney General Paxton has one hour for opening statements, 24 hours for presentation of evidence, one hour for rebuttal evidence, and one hour for final arguments. That's a total of 27 hours for each side. Both parties, the managers and Attorney General Paxton, are in agreement on this issue, which pleases the court. Managers, in this motion, you state, at a minimum, you seek clarification that the time spent by an opposing party on cross-examination will be counted only against the party conducting the cross-examination. Attorney General Paxton's team, you responded that time spent questioning a witness whether via direct or cross-examination is charged against the side conducting the questioning. Based on your agreement of last week, this is how the clock will run. For example, House managers, when you call a witness, any direct questioning of the witness counts against your 24 hours. When Paxson's team questions the witness on cross, time will be counted against your clock. I also want to note that the clock will keep running through routine objections. However, if I find that it's being abused by either side, I can always use my discretion to give back the time to the other party. To summarize, so we're clear what everyone has agreed to, both parties have a total of 24 hours for presentation of evidence, which includes direct, cross-examination, redirect, and recross. Anytime a party questions a witness, whether by a direct cross, redirect, recross, the clock will continue to run. And again, in addition to the 24 hours, each party has one hour for opening statements, if they choose to make those, one hour for rebuttal, and one hour for closing arguments. I've also told both sides, if they do not use the full hour allotted for their opening statement, any remaining time will be added to their 24 hours for presentation of evidence. For example, if one side only uses 30 minutes, they will have 24 and a half hours of time. Finally, managers requested to change the rules regarding the use of wireless mobile devices. A rule change must be submitted in writing during trial and requires a 24-hour lay layout period. Accordingly, this motion has been addressed and no further action shall be taken. Now I will take up motion 24 submitted by the respondent, Attorney General Paxson. The motion is entitled, Motion to Compel Discovery from House Managers. This motion was addressed by my July 12th discovery order and August 9th exhibit production order. Therefore, no further action on this motion will be taken. Now I'll take up motion 12 submitted by the respondent, Attorney General Paxson. The motion is entitled, Motion to Exclude Inadmissible, inadmissible Evidence. This addresses the issue of political contributions. Because this information is readily available from the Texas Ethics Commission for everyone to read, this motion is denied. Now I will take up motion 23, submitted by the respondent, Attorney General Paxson. The motion is entitled, Motion for Notice of Brady Material and Notice of Trial Exhibits. The motion was addressed by my July 12th discovery order and August 9th Exhibit production order. Accordingly, no further action is needed on this motion. Now we'll take up motion three submitted by the House Board of Managers. The motion is entitled, Request to Clarify 
the July 12th discovery order or alternatively motion for protective order regarding documents produced to Warren Kenneth Paxton Jr. pursuant to the Senate July 12th discovery order. This motion was addressed by my July 20th reiteration of the orders of the court. Accordingly, no further action on this motion. Now I will take a motion one submitted by the respondent Attorney General Paxton. The motion is entitled Motion for Pretrial Scheduling Order or Pretrial Conference. This motion was addressed by my July 12th discovery order and August 9th exhibit production order. Accordingly, no further action is needed. Now I will take up motion four submitted by the respondent, Attorney General Paxton. The motion is entitled Motion to Preclude Attorney General Warren Kenneth Paxton Jr. from being compelled to testify. This court notes that many factors and circumstances in this proceeding lean more on criminal in nature. The rules require a standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, which is reserved for criminal cases. Exculpatory evidence was required to be produced consistent with criminal cases. The rules require a plea to the court to be guilty or not guilty, which are the pleas exclusively used in criminal cases. Judgments of the court of impeachment are entered as acquittal or conviction, which are operative terms for judgments in criminal cases. And the House of Managers have repeatedly compared the actions of the House of Representatives to a grand jury as they prefer the articles of impeachment Grand juries are utilized only in criminal cases. Therefore, the motion is granted. The Attorney General cannot be compelled to testify. This is consistent with the reasoning and judgment in the United States Supreme Court, Boyd versus the United States. The court's ruling is clear. You may not call the Attorney General as a witness.